Good morning, everybody. It's currently about 8.10 in the morning right now. Uh, I'm just about to fill up the CO2 and feed the fish, but my CO2 cartridge is taken all apart right now, so I thought I would give you guys a little bit of an explanation. So I use uh, paintball canisters to inject my CO2. So this is just a 20 ounce paintball can. You can see up here, it's got a little pin. You push that pin, the CO2 comes out. So from there, I go to regulators. But if you're going to use a paintball can, you have to get an adapter like this one here. So if you look inside the bottom of it, you can see that it's got a little pin with a hole beside it. And that little pin pushes the pin on top of the CO2 can, letting the gas flow into the regulator through that hole. Now on the other side of the regulator, this is what it looks like. So for starters, this one is operated by a plug. So you have to have it plugged into 120 volts alternating current or it will not work. Um, doesn't matter how much gas you have going into it, you have to have it plugged in for the valve to open. There are ones you can get without the plug, which is actually what I'm going to be doing. I will be switching this to a non-plug because the plug is starting to be a pain in the butt for me. So down here in this one, this PSI checker will show you how much is coming into the regulator. So it's measuring this part of the regulator. And then this valve here measures what's leaving the regulator going out towards the tank through the drip counter. Now over here we have a small adjustment valve. Uh, it is for adjusting the pressures so you could get like one drop a second coming through here or whatever you like. You do have to unscrew this and fill it up with water if you want it to work as a drip counter. I do not for my methods. Um, but yeah, I just want to show you guys that real quick. So this paintball adapter is about 15 bucks on Amazon. It's worth it. I've just used some Teflon tape in there to make a better seal. And then the regulator, everything just, you just put it on like this. I never like to sit right behind the CO2 can, uh, just in case like something ever happens and this seal here breaks and the can launches off. I've just heard horror stories about like CO2 cartridges flying through you know, fences and all kinds of other crazy, crazy things that have happened over the years. Um, mostly to kids playing paintball, but still, it's enough to make me cautious. So I'm going to go ahead, put a couple of wrenches on here. And there's one. There's two. So when you're using a wrench, guys, you always want to have the strong side of the wrench on the side you're going to be pulling with. So if this is going to have the most force, so when you're turning this direction, you want to have it facing this way. You don't want to be doing this because this will actually open the wrench as it's going. A little bit of wrench knowledge there for you guys in the in the fish world. So now I'm just going to basically twist this on. Oh, I got to get all these cords and wires out of my way. But essentially, I'm just going to twist this on, get a little bit tighter first, and now I'll do it with the wrenches. So I don't know if you guys could hear that little but it, uh, it just filled the regulator with CO2. And you can now see that that pressure gauge is at 150 instead of zero, because um, it's now pressurized. But I always like to go a little bit extra on my twisting to make sure that it's all tight and nothing's leaking. If you're nervous if you have leaks, guys, what you can do is you can just put a little bit of soapy water uh, on this fitting here and this fitting here, and wherever it bubbles, that means you have a leak. So now that I have the CO2 uh, inside here, I'm going to show you guys how I actually set it up on my tanks and how I inject it. So I do a passive CO2 method which is these Gatorade bottles throughout the tanks, as I showed you earlier. I fill them once a day with CO2, and then it slowly dissolves into the water. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that all set up, and I'll show you guys. 
Unfortunately, I have the plug method, so I have to have this plugged in the whole time while I'm using my CO2, and while this is plugged in, the CO2 is leaking out. So I do waste a bit of CO2 hopping from tank to tank and stuff like that, which is one of the reasons I want to get a regulator that doesn't have a plug. But let me get that ready for you guys. And I'll show you what that all looks like in a second. But basically, I take my airline tubing, once I get it ready here, Sorry for that bad angle, it's hard to do one handed, but I take this uh, right here like so, and I just shove it in, you got to get it right inside where you want it to be, oh man, it's giving me a hard time today, it's because of my camera of course. Okay, so that's now in there, and then I take my plug, and I plug it in up there. So once this starts going, you can see it fills up really, really quickly as you first put new CO2 in the tank. Like in the paintball tank, this is going about five times as fast as it did yesterday. Um, and you can see the fish don't really like how fast I'm filling everything, but I like how fast I fill everything when it's doing this because my job takes seconds instead of minutes. But the fish definitely don't like being blasted around like this. Oh, that one's running away from me. Yeah, some of my fishing line um, was not tied the best and the rocks were a bit too tall. So some of it doesn't all make sense here. Uh, however, I did want to show you guys that that's how I do my CO2 methods. And now all of these tanks are fully CO2'd. Uh, I don't have any of those ones yet. There's not many plants that need it down there, um, and they're kind of fry tanks and grow out tanks right now. So they currently don't have CO2, but it's a super easy method. It's super duper cheap. The regulator was the most expensive part, and you don't need it for this method. I did it because I was originally going to try and do diffusers, but it, they didn't work for me. So um, I will be changing to basically get rid of this. So my next regulator will just look like that. Maybe have an easier valve to turn than this. But total cost, let's talk about that. $15 for a used paintball tank. $15 for an adapter. $60 for the regulator with the electric adapter. So if you wanted to use the diffuser methods, which is totally viable, I just personally don't like it. Um, this would only cost you about 80 bucks, 90 bucks. If you're going to do it my way, don't get uh, uh, a regulator with a solenoid. Just get one without the solenoid and you'll probably be able to do this for under $60. Plus, you get to get drink some Gatorade or Pop. Anyways, that's going to wrap this up for this video. I just want to show you guys my CO2. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this helps you. Keep fishing.